What's going on everybody? I'm Patrick Chapla, founder of Palax and creator of Palax Master Coach. And in this video, I'm extremely excited to share with you guys one of the simplest and most effective man up plays that I have ever come across called the twist. So finding a really good man up play for your specific team or program can be a pretty daunting task because you have to consider the strengths and the weaknesses of the players on your man up squad and then you have to put them into some type of play, rotation, or set that will allow them to see what the defense gives them and then hopefully find a lot of really good shot opportunities and score a lot of goals. So like many other coaches, I oftentimes turn to the best programs in the country. I would watch Duke, DU, Notre Dame, Maryland, Syracuse, UNC, all of these programs, and try to mirror what they were doing with my high school and youth programs. But oftentimes those plays were far too complicated for the youth players and relatively complicated for the high school players, and they would take way too long to train, and oftentimes those plays were designed to attack a specific defensive strategy that we maybe wouldn't be seeing. And so when I found the twist, I was taught it by J.B. Monroe when I was coaching at Mountain Vista, it was like a whole new thing, you know. This play, it can work against any defensive strategy. It's all about reading the defense and seeing what they give you. And it's simple enough so that you can run it with players that are in sixth grade. And they will be able to run it effectively and learn it very easily. In this video, we will cover everything from which types of players should go where within our set, how we're going to run twist, and then we're going to simulate it against all four of the most common man down defensive strategies out there. So we're going to run it against a box and one, a box and one with a string, a four man rotation with a locked crease, and then a five man rotation. So let's get right into it. The first thing that we need to cover is how to set up twist and where all the personnel should be. Twist is run from a 3-3 from the top left or top right. The best combination of right and left handed players is 3-3 three and three, and that way you'll be able to run the play from either side with a slight rotation. But if you don't have three lefties, you'll have to run it from the right side. We will run it from the right side with three righties and three lefties. The righties will be in the top right, top center, and side right locations, with the lefties on the crease, side left, and top left. If you have to use four righties and two lefties, I recommend putting the fourth righty on the crease. If you want to run it with the lefties, just reverse the field from what we cover. Now that we know where the players will be in our 3-3 set, let's talk skills. The bottom right player, A2, should be a good finisher, someone who can catch the ball and bury it and has decent range. The player on the crease, A3, should have great hands and be able to distribute or shoot quickly after catching the ball. The bottom left player, A1, should always be left-handed and be a good finisher who has decent range. The top left player, M3, should also be a lefty and have a great time and room shot. M2, the player who is top center, should be a righty in our example and should have a good time and room shot off of a catch, but also know how to move the ball if pressure comes quickly. Finally, M1 is our trigger man. He needs to be the player who makes the best decisions, can read what a defense is doing, and make precise feeds or step in for a time and room shot. We will go over in detail how to coach this player for the best results. Lastly, these players can be any variation of midfielders or attackmen. We have all the midfielders up top to prevent a break going the other way on a bad shot or an errant pass. But you do not have to have all your minis up top. Now we know what kinds of players we want where, let's cover the play and then how it will work against the defenses. To start the play, we will swing the ball to M1 and he will initiate the play by passing down to A2. A2 needs to make sure that the low defenseman here plays him before passing up to M1. M1 will carry to the middle of the field with his stick up in a loaded position and M2 will shallow cut, keeping his eyes on the ball the entire time. During this carry shallow cut, M1 will read the defenses and make a decision. Now let's talk about how the defense could respond in our four most commonly used defenses. In the future, most likely spring of 2017, we will be coming out with a video that will show you guys how to train your players to investigate man down defenses. So that as you guys are running your man up plays, all of your players will understand the defensive strategy that the opposing team is using and therefore will have a better understanding of which looks will most likely be open. The first defense we will cover is a box in one formation. This is a set zone, so our carry will make the defense rotate. M1 will pass down to A2, who will draw D2 before passing back up to M1. As M1 carries, he needs to watch D1 and evaluate whether he is going to cover him during the carry by rotating to the top or stay behind to cover M2 on his shallow cut. Here, M1 can use lookback fakes to try to make D1 play M2 as he is shallow cutting. 
If D1 stays in his zone and plays M2, M1 will now watch the LSM. If the LSM stays in his zone to cover M3, he will be able to step in and take a time and room shot. If the LSM plays him, he can pass to M3, who will step in and fire from 10 to 12 yards. If D1 rotates and stays with M1, M1 will pass back to M2, and M2 will have a good time and room opportunity. If D2 rotates up to M2, M2 can pass down to A2, who should have a great inside finishing opportunity. Now let's watch a live example of how this works against a box in one. Here we are twisting with the lefties. Number 21 top left will pass down to side left and then receive the ball right back. As they carry in shallow cut, number 21 reads that the defender is staying with him, so he throws back to number 17 who has shallow cut. In this example, the low right defender is late on his rotation and number 17 has a time and room shot from 12 yards and puts it past the keeper. The next man down defense we are going to cover is a box in one with a string on the crease. This is where the player defending the crease man is accountable for the man who is up top when the ball is top center and accountable for the crease man when the ball is anywhere else. Once again, M1 will pass down to A2 who will draw D2 and then pass back up to M1. As this happens, A3 should be getting to about 7 to 9 yards above GLE in the middle of the field. As M1 carries and M2 shallow cuts, he will once again watch D1 and now defensive midi one. D1 should stay in his zone because he is not responsible for top center. DM1 will have to play M1 as the ball gets to top center. At this point, A3 should be open for a second if D3 is not pinching enough, so M1 will feed A3 on the crease. As A3 catches the ball, the LSM and D3 will crash on him, so he should use a quick stick to pass the ball back out to M3 or A1 for a great shot. If he has the time to shoot, he can quick turn and get a good shot off. In the event that D3 is all the way into the crease, remember that he is at 7 to 9 yards above GLE in the center of the field. M1 will then skip the ball through to A1. If the LSM is smart and is filling the passing lane between M1 and A1, all M1 needs to do is throw a little fake towards M3 to get the LSM out of the lane and skip it through to A1 for an easy dunk. Now let's attack a four-man rotation with a locked crease. Within this defensive set, D1, D2, D3, and the LSM will be rotating to cover the five players on the outside of the field, while defensive midi 1 locks off A3 on the crease. M1 will pass down to A2, and A2 will draw D2. This is extremely important when playing against rotating defenses because this will create our mismatch. A2 will pass back up to M1, and we will initiate the carry shallow cut. As this happens, you'll be surprised at how many defenses mix and match their rules and don't rotate correctly here. So you may get some of the box and one or string looks here, but if they run a true four-man rotation, you will get the LSM and D1 playing M1 and M2, whether they switch or not is irrelevant to us. So now we have D3 and D2 playing A2, A1, and M3. M1's reads here will be the rotations of D3 and D2 and the skip lane defense of the LSM and D1. If D2 is flying through the defense and D1 is not in a skip lane, he can skip the ball to A2 who should be sneaking for an easy dunk. If D3 is in a good passing lane and is pre-rotating up to M3, he can skip it down to A1. If D1 and D3 are in good skip lanes, we will move the ball quickly from M3 to A1 and possibly through to A2, where each player will read the play and shoot if they have a good shot. A big key to this is that once again we have A3 at 7 to 9 yards to ensure that the lane from A1 to A2 is open. The final defense we will attack is a 5-man rotation. In this set, we will be trying to find skip passes against defensive midi 1 and D2 as M1 reaches top center. Before we get into the play, I want to give some background on a five-man rotation. I like to run them where the on-ball defender and adjacent defenders will stay with their men as any motion happens before re-evaluating where they are and seeing if they need to spider in backside and cover two. In our example, M1 will pass down to A2, who will draw D2 before passing back to M1. M1 and M2 will carry and shallow cut. At this point in the five-man rotation, we will have D1 on ball, D3 and the LSM ready to rotate to M3 and M2, while defensive midi 1 and D2 are splitting A1, A3, and A2 low. M1 will read the momentum of defensive midi 1, D2, and the skip lanes and feed A1, A3, or A2. If D3 rotates before D2 can get in and release defensive midi 1 on the crease, the skip lane to A1 should be open for an easy dunk. 
If the LSM is worried about the throwback to M2 and is not covering the passing lane while D2 gets in, the skip lane will be open for A2 for an easy dunk. Finally, if defensive midi 1 and D2 are caught out of position against A3, M1 can dump it down to the crease and A3 for an inside finish. The last thing that we're going to cover in this video is how we want to coach our trigger man or M1. So the first thing that you're going to want to make sure he can do pretty well is sense his own defenseman. So as he is carrying over the shallow cut, we want him to be looking through the defense, not at his own defender. And so he needs to be able to sense whether or not his defenseman has left him or has stayed with him so that he can make the correct decisions. The second thing that we want to make sure that he can do is that he can read players who are coming at him and use the basic rule of make sure you pass past the slide that's coming at you. So in our example, the LSM might slide towards him as he carries over, and he would want to pass to M3 at that point. The last thing that is really important to teach M1 in this scenario is that you really want to start to use fakes because as you are carrying over without a lot of pressure on your hands, you can throw fakes that will move the off-ball defenders, and then you can use skip lanes once they have moved. I hope you enjoy this presentation of the Twist Man Up play and that you guys find similar success in your programs. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, email me at patrick at powlax.com. Check out all the other videos at powlaxmastercoach.com. If you like this video, make sure to share it, and I will see you guys in the next video.